Hey everyone, happy Saturday. And we are back for another session in our journal here. And um, remember last week we were working with the stamps and I had done the, the stamping with the our ink on a piece of fabric. This is actually a, a vintage piece of um, uh, kimono silk. It's actually the lining from a kimono. And it really, I love the way it prints. And so many of you have been doing this technique and saying how much you loved it. Um, and I, I really like the way this bled on here. And what's amazing is it actually still looks like text. You can almost read it, you know? So the next page in our journal is right here. So actually I want to glue it directly to the page and then let these pieces hang over. Um, I also covered that little, where is it? Trying to find anything. This covered that little slide with some of the vintage um, Asian paper. And so I want to use that. And I thought some kind of number or something in there would be cool because, you know, we're dealing with specimens and what have you, this being a, a cabinet of curiosities. So I got this, um, a while back, Tim Holtz had sent me a number of things. He said, you know, he asked me what I wanted. And in an attempt not to say everything, I actually select stuff. <laughs> So, um, but I love his stamps and I've, I've purchased a number of his stamps because I love them. So when he offered, I knew that I wanted some more. So this is one of the ones he gifted me. And what I generally do is I generally will ink up the entire pad. They come out individually. So you can take them out individually when you want to use them. But a lot of times I just ink the entire thing up and then stamp it. This is what they, um, I forget what color this is, but it's one of the distressed pigments. So you can see how real, the color is really distressed there. It's really cool. It's like it's the full color on the back, but the distressed looks like this. And then I use the black. So I generally will just do the whole sheet and then tear them out. That way I don't have to think about it. So I had, done the, I had already done these a while back. So I'm just going to use those. I think I'm going to go with this number right here. Um, so I'm gonna need to take that out so that it can go around. Well, hands are everywhere. I want to just kind of put it right there. So I need to get a bit of that out. So that number will go in there like that. And so I'll come back to that. I also have some of my embroidery thread because I went back and pulled out some of my handmade papers. And these papers, are, I have so many handmade papers over the, I've made so much paper over the years that these are probably at least 10 years old, but it's got a lot of flora and fauna in it. I just love, love, love paper making. And when I finish with my, my studio ranch, I'm actually going to put a paper making facility on it. That'll be one of the next structures I work on because I want to get back to making, getting a beater, a Hollander beater, so I can actually make papers. But I wanted some, I thought I would, so I went back through those and pulled them out because I'm like, this is real, of course, filled notes and cabinet of curiosities and what have you. So I thought I would put this in here and probably make it like a flip so it can open up because I really still like that page. I don't want to get rid of that. So I thought it would be cool to make that a flip. And then I got the embroidery floss because I thought I would just do some stitching on it. I also pulled out some other papers. These are all papers that I've made. Um, this one is kind of like a pocket with sort of uh, rosebuds in it and some of this um, cloth. This has all been sandwiched in the paper making process, but I, I have so much of this. I use it in collages and things like that. But I pulled these out because I had to laugh to myself because these are ink blots. These are like blots made with pigment though this is an ink this is actually paper pigment that's that's um beaten so fine that you literally can just like paint with it and here's some more but i thought you guys would enjoy seeing i mean i've been doing ink blots <gasps> i think mean, all of my art career i just love them and these are all handmade paper and they're all made um with pig with paper 
This is not ink or paint or anything. It's actually paper that's been pigmented black. And then I worked with it. So I pulled those off. I'm sure I'll use those at some point. But I thought this splatter, it's kind of like a pinky beige. And it really works well with, um, with this color here. So I thought I would put this down here. Maybe just kind of have it as like a little side, tuck, you know, tuck pocket type of thing. So anyhow, let's get going. I think I'm going to start with just getting this down first. Let me um, hold this down. So I hope you guys had a really great week. Enjoyed your studio time and all that good stuff. Let me just try to get this held in place. Okay. So I think I'm going to use the Giotto because we know that works well with fabric. And I'm going to just put it right on the page. But I really do want it hanging over. So I'm going to make sure that I get enough of it. So it's kind of like off to the side and the top. So I'm going to start with getting the Giotto in down and just getting it right in the middle because then I can come back the fabric and lift it up and get it down exactly where it needs to be. I'm just kind of got to get this part of it going. Okay, so let's get this in place. Make it like that. That'd be cool. good <clears throat> and I want these edges to be free but don't um, because it's lightweight the fabric so it's not gonna be too weird over time okay now this right here could stand to probably wrap around so I'm gonna put some right on the fabric so that I can just get it to wrap around to the other side and that'll stay in place okay that's looking good. I really love that on the fabric. How simple is that? So then we're going to go ahead and put this pocket in. It's going to be like a side tuck. So let me just go ahead and get my PVA. Grab it from over here because that's always good for this type of thing. So I'm going to put, whoops. Oh, a lot, Robin. Let's get some there. Let me get some of this cleaned up. One of the ways I do it is just to use a credit card and just kind of just kind of sliding it over and taking some off at the same time. That way I get a I get a straight line and I don't have a lot of ink. I mean a lot of paint right there. So let's just go a little easier here. And then I'm going to come slightly up this edge just to kind of so that whole thing stays tucked in. So do that. We'll let that sit. And then it'll just be kind of like a little tuck space there, which is cool. It all works together nicely. So you see that piece of Love it, love it, love it. Okay, now. Let that set up. This paper, this handmade paper is so strong too. You don't have to worry about it tearing or ripping over time because it's very strong. It's made from cotton. This is actually made from cotton. So it's a 100% cotton fiber. Let's get a little bit underneath here. because It seems like that wants to stick up. So we want it to lay down. So I'm just going to get that there. Love it. So now what I want to do is let's go ahead and get this going. I think the way I'm going to do this is to hmm. what did I do with my pencil? Did I actually move my pencil? Hmm. Okay. Let me just get, 
think I did move it. I'll do the no-no and just use <laughs> the ink pen because I want to be able to cut this out. So I want that like that. So I kind of want to know where my frame is. I'm just doing a real light line. That way I don't have to worry about seeing it. That was really light. I think that didn't even do anything. Let's do it like this. so light so it doesn't really show up just want to do it enough so i can see i want to cut just a little bit beyond it let me just go ahead and separate this first of all what is it just wanted to be a little bit bigger around the side so that i can just glue it to the back so i'm gonna glue this to the back here and then this is going to actually, the whole thing is going to get glued to this piece of handmade paper. I think I'm going to put it down there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get a little bit of glue around the edges. So let me lay that down and try to get this the way I want it. Kind of lay it down there, hold it in place, and then this will stick to the back of it. So it's kind of translucent because it's the, the tissue paper, but it doesn't matter because I'm actually going to end up gluing it to this whole piece. I thought that that would look kind of cool glued down to there when this becomes a flap. So I really liked that sort of idea of a specimen, but you know. So let's put that up there. You know, a little bit more glue. Just to make it go a little bit higher. Because I don't want it, I really don't want it to flap. We just want enough so it can something can go down in there. Okay. Alrighty. I feel like I'm really fumbling, like I'm all over the place. Apologize if that's what it looks like on the other side of the camera. I think I'm, this is good though. So now what I want to do is I want to make this a flip. But um, I want to have a couple of ideas. So this needs to kind of go over at least this far so that it'll clear everything. And then I'll have the space to turn this into a flip. I need to do something up here too, because this side of the paper is white. I don't like that, so I'll fix that too. So if I take it like this, I want to I want to be able to fold enough over so that it comes to this side. And actually, it really looks good wrapped around over here, over top of all of that. Just kind of gives us some different texture. But on this side, it just gives us, you know, enough of a flip. So you guys can just do this with, you know, just kind of like some of the sources for handmade paper um you know you probably can find some like with you know blake always has some um online the um the mulberry mulberrypapers.com i think it's called you kind of want to play around with that and i need to i want to figure out what i'm gonna put here because that's gonna bother me and i don't want to i guess i could you know what, I could actually glue this down. Okay, we'll come back to that. The other thing I was thinking about doing is, in all of my attempt to organize and clean up the studio, I found this, another one of these punches, but it actually makes holes like, um, like stitches. And I thought it would be cool just to kind of put this in here and just see how it stamps. I don't know. Let's see how it went through. See how it makes, can you guys see this? See, it makes those stitches. I think that's kind of cool. So I thought I would do that and then use that um, to run some holes with this, this is some vintage 
um, embroidery thread. And I just thought, you know, like it would just make a cool pattern just to kind of go in and out. So let's do it. Since it's already there, ready to go. Of course, you could kind of do crisscrossing and stuff like that, but I think I'm just going to do a simple pattern of back and forth. So that's another one of those things I found at the thrift store because, I, I mean, I wouldn't have bought it because I wouldn't even have thought about what am I going to do with a line of holes that, that like, I mean, look at it, what it looks like on here. It just looks like a line of holes. But when you actually punch it, that's when I realized, oh, wow, that's really cool. It looks like a... Um, go inside. What I'm doing is I'm running the piece of thread that I have on the back. I'm just running it underneath there. It's, it'll hold it in place. And I thought, wow, that looks like sewing machine, machine stitches. And I thought, okay, well, let me just <laughs> add this little element to our journal. And I think I've actually seen those on, um, I'll look and if I see one on Amazon, I'll make a link for it. But you know what else? If you have a sewing machine, you literally could take and run your sewing machine um, down and make make a similar stitch thing and then sew into it. Of course, you could hand stitch too. But it's something about, and for me, the idea of this even row because I would never hand stitch anything that looked even like this. It would definitely be all over the place. So I just kind of like that element of so if you have one like this or something similar and you weren't quite sure what to do with it, <laughs> you might try this. So I think what I'll do is, I wonder if I'll change the stitch, change the direction. Did it stop there? Oh, here we are. I wonder if I took this, this would be cool to use just to kind of really just do a lot of overlapping of, um, of pattern of stitching. Cause I like the way it has that real nice, even flow to it. Then what I was thinking is suppose I just kind of go and just kind of go straight down like a straight stitch. And maybe I'll leave the other holes there. Like I'll leave some open just for something different. So I'm just kind of going in and out to make a straight stitch. And then we'll turn this into a flap. Okay. Okay, there we go. Did I do that wrong? <gasps> did I wrap around this thing? What did I do, Robin? Okay, we're not gonna worry about it. Okay, it was right. So then we kind of have those stitches going down like that, which are kind of cool. I'll bring it through and then I'm going to end it on this side here through that hole. So let's just go ahead and clip it. I'll figure out what I'm going to do with that. Okay, so I really like that. I think the other thing I want to do is let me get some of... Oh yeah, I like that. That's kind of cool. A knot would be nice, but I don't know. Okay, we'll see. And then this right here would just go down there. This little page is coming along. Let me see. Let's get some. Um, let me just grab some of this paper. Those of you who got the, the bundles, who won the comment challenge bundles last 
um, the last month you got some of these papers in there so pull them out and put them in your book let me see I want something that is a little more that's cool that's too much because I don't want anything that's going to fight with this because I really like that so I just want whatever I'm doing up here to be subtle so never really know which ones to go for maybe even something plain First thing I'm trying to do is just cover up the white because that was a piece of um, it was a piece of copier paper that I had done with the um, image on it. So we want to get rid of that, but I can just glue it, glue something over top of it, which will bring some interest. Let's just figure out what it's going to be. Got to figure it out. Okay. Even some of this yellow. Do I have some of this yellow with, uh, yeah, with text on it? This is good because it picks up the color of the handmade paper and, and then I can just kind of do something. Let's do this. Okay, so it just kind of covers it up, but I don't want too much of it. That's good. Get my uhu. Because this stuff is so strong, we do not need it to, to rip anything. And what's nice too is this is this is uh, the paper's translucent, so we'll still be able to see what's underneath. We just get rid of this white. It just adds a little bit of interest to it. Yeah, okay, that's good. This little bit up here, we'll just get rid of it. So that works. So now let's just go ahead and put some glue on the back of here for our flip. I'm going to use the Uhu because we know it's going to be strong. But you could use the PVA or you could use, I mean, I'm using the Giotto, but you could use the PVA or the, the Uhu method for that matter. Let's go ahead and get this. place. And that just adds a nice bit of texture onto the other side. See that? And the handmade paper is so responsive because it really takes glue nicely. It really, even though it's thick, it really folds down beautifully. And so then we have that on this side, which I love. Could definitely do more stitching as well. I don't want to spend a lot of time stitching because that's kind of boring just to look at. Okay, so then I think, oh, I like that. This can go down here. So that's perfect. And kind of have this piece. I don't think I want to use the same the same paper, but I am going to. I'll put another piece of um, paper or something down over this string, hold it in place, but then we can still see the string. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down now. This I'm going to use the uhu, but you know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use the PVA because this is kind of a shiny side on the opposite side of this um, slide, and I know for a fact that 
this um, PVA will hold this in, in place forever. Just kind of smush it around to the edges a little bit. Just kind of smooth it out. Okay, so let's get this down like right about here. I recently came across a lot of these empty slide things and of course I didn't get them because I was thinking, oh, that's just one more thing. And then I recently thought about how I wanted to use them, this being one of the ways. And I'm like, golly, why didn't I get those? <laughs> but I'll find them. You see them, you see them periodically at the, um, hold this down, like at the thrift stores and stuff like that, but you can also find them online because really you don't really care what's inside of them, even if it has like images of someone's birthday party or something like that. You know, you can take you take those slide pieces out. And you know what? You can take those out and maybe even like stamp on them or smush a little paint on them, like even if it's black or gold or something. And then we can use those as collage elements in the book because you're not, you know, like you don't, at that point, you're not going to see what the slide is, but you get that little slide in there. I like that. Okay, so that works nicely. Let me find a some kind of straight piece for this. I would like something with this red on it. I think I have some, some pieces of it already because I only need just a little piece of it. Maybe I don't. Let me see. Maybe. I want to use the same thing. Oh. Oh, that would be cool because then it's kind of like lines as well. Let's get that. So I think what I'll do is just kind of tear a straight bit of it so it looks, you know, like a label or, or a place to, to write something. Oh, I like that. Let's go ahead and put that there. And this is old paper as well, so it's all nice and stained and it's got the right colors to it. Throw this out the way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll make sure that that little piece of thread there is also glued down. I like it this way. Okay. So I'm going to just put a little bit of glue underneath this just to kind of to hold it straight so it doesn't move when I go to put this over top. Okay, I'm just glue it over here to the side because I didn't bring my glue book gut. And uh, I don't want this glue to transfer anywhere. So I'm using the Ulu, which works nicely on this really thin paper. Now let me stand up because we definitely don't want to get this down there crooked. Oh, love it. Okay. I really like that. Wow, that's this little folder has turned into quite the uh, little flap, you know, sort of. I love it. And with this over there, and then I just noticed I have this piece of um, vintage paper. Put this down underneath it. Or maybe, oh, I could put it to here. Maybe so that it opens. How do I do that? I think I can get my stapler in there. I really like this. Okay, let me sit here and figure this out. There's a way to do this, but how? I want to still be able to see this here, but it's kind of nice having this writing over here to kind of echo this and then I sort of I do like seeing this uh, that, 
that aged page underneath. I think that cut off when I was putting that down. So hopefully I won't ever know how much you saw until I go back and do it. But anyhow, I like that. So that works nicely as layers, all the, these cream, these pinky creams all are working nicely together, even though they're all different types of papers. And then this is sort of more of a celery kind of yellowy green. So now we just need to do something here. Let's do another something there. A strip would be nice of Maybe I'll use something, where, where was that piece I had? That's similar to what I did, used on the slide. Um, no, it's here, I just, I've only moved it a half a dozen times. Oh boy, oh boy, okay. Just looked at it. This is always nice too. Think about that. Let me see if I can find the piece I was looking for. Kind of like seeing the threads. I don't really want to cover it up. Here it is. is there. See this, I can put this whole strip down. I'll just run the whole strip down and then I'll still see the sewing underneath there, but it'll, it'll look good. Just kind of rip it against this ruler. The metal edge always helps to get a nice, neat tear. Okay, so let me see. And this is gonna, you know, we'll be able to see the stitching underneath it. Okay, let's do it like that. I think I'll stop it like about right there. Okay, so we'll glue this up. I'm using the, um, the Uhu, so we'll just kind of glue this. And that just gives another added bit of ephemera without um, so we can see it but it also kind of adds more information so that's perfect so that's nice that just kind of blends in with the paper okay I really like this. This has turned out like really interesting. I didn't really know which way I was going to go with this, but just had pulled some similar color pieces together. And then of course we always have a pocket for that little special something we want to put in there. And I really don't think I want to put anything else on this side. I was originally thinking about, but I feel like, you know, like this side is sort of simple. And then this one has, this side has a little bit more going on, which is, which is nice. And we still have that underneath there. I think that's it. I like this just like like it is. I don't think we need to do anything else to it. So, okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. This, now this, I think this video is a little shorter than normal. <laughs> anyway, it's always nice hanging out with you all. I always enjoy our time in the chat. Thank you for coming in early and hanging out and talking and sharing so much. We, are, we have a lot of fun over there on Saturday mornings. Um, so any questions, comments, any good things like that, that you want to ask or share, please do. And, um, until make sure that you hit the, the thumb up. If you enjoyed the video, if you're new to the channel, pretty please hit that bell, hit all so that you get all the notifications because the premieres we do every Saturday morning, seven AM Pacific time. And so you can come in into the chat, hang out, talk. It's a great community, people from all over the world. So you may find someone in your geographic area that's a part of this community that you guys can get together and hang out, maybe do some studio times together and stuff like that. So there's a lot of opportunity. So until next week, happy creating. Love you guys and take care. Bye-bye.